What y'all listening to? Lime Light Highlight Podcast. Welcome back to the show, Your Positive Podcast. Safe space and great place for a positive outlook on life as every show starts off. Another week and another amazing episode filled with amazing people doing amazing things overall. The This next episode is amazing. On this episode of the podcast, we're joined by Denise McCammett and Bill Jericho from Spark Life. This was the first actual successful episode recorded at the block shop while I was at my stint back in Philly. And for those of you who don't know, as of 2018, just a little hindsight, Philadelphia remains the nation's poorest large city with a poverty rate that has barely moved in recent years compared to the other top 10 cities. This can obviously lead to a ton of other underlying problems, but one of the biggest problems in this city is the heroin epidemic. There's been there's there's no place like Philadelphia when it comes to the accessibility to drugs, especially in neighborhoods like Kensington. Um, I know my family has been impacted by this epidemic, and so was as well as my, as well as myself um, from my uncle dying from a drug overdose when I was in about fourth grade to uh, me having to attend a funeral of a very good friend of mine that just last summer. Uh, recently passed so this problem seems to like it's it's con- constantly growing and it's it's been around for a long time so that's the bad news but fortunately we have an organization that is working diligently to help not only those working towards recovery but also the families of those who have suffered from a loss due to the drug epidemic um denise and bill get really personal sharing their experiences in the show uh, Denise's daughter is a recovering addict and Bill was on the show Intervention and uh, he shares what he went through after the death of his sister in 2019 so very heart wrenching stories um, I hope you get a grasp of how real this is uh, they both share why they decided to start this organization to help those who are suffering with addiction which is absolutely a disease and I will debate anyone all day on why it is 100% not a choice um, there are three main points i really hope you take away from this episode um one being the message is on this episode is is togetherness after hearing their stories it's so apparent that compassion and community is the only way we're going to really be able to help these people um two you're not alone and you don't have to be as we discuss in this episode there are there you know there's huge problems and, and many many people have been affected by it and you're not alone there's no shame in having this affect your life or or knowing someone or even yourself having having a a problem with addiction and and three anyone can be affected um just like covid addiction does not discriminate no matter your socioeconomic status how much money you have your upbringing anybody from all walks of life can suffer from and be a victim of addiction so There are a ton of gems in this episode and and many eye-opening stories. Um, I hope this episode shows you a different perspective and maybe changes your idea on what addiction really is. Um, All that and more, but uh, before we get any deeper into that, we got to speak on uh, this week's unrelated fun fact. I lost my train of thought for a second. (laughs) Um, So this week's unrelated fun fact, real quick, I thought this was super interesting Y'all remember that MTV show, um, 16 and Pregnant? Pretty interesting fact is that after the premiere of that episode, um, they had uh, teen pregnancy rates were dropped. Um, MTV may have been known for a bunch of really stupid reality shows that everybody mindlessly watched, but after 16 and Pregnant dropped, teen pregnancy went down 5.7% within 18 months of the show airing. Uh, I guess teens watch that show and realize uh, that really ain't the way you want to live your life. So either way, I say that was a win and an indirect positive effect. But now that we're done with that, let's welcome Denise and Bill to the show. So I have on the podcast today um, from Spark Life. Is it Spark Life or just Spark? Um, Spark is the Spark Life actually um, is what we go by. Okay. You guys want to introduce yourselves and give yes. a little bit of your background and how yep. you guys got involved in this? Sure. Um, so my name is Denise McCammett. I am a um, director of Spark. Um, we have for just about a year and a half now, I think it has been, 
we decided to be part of the solution. We had a loss in the family. Um, it was a, a cousin of mine, um, and it was also a family member, a sister of Bill, and um, the president of our company's daughter. Um, so we all came together as a family. We are, as it is completely family um, that runs it and supports us. Um, but we came together at the services, and we actually decided that something has to stop. Something, we have to be part of the solution. Um, we can't continue to lose our family member and our younger generation and just kind of sit back and mourn it. We need, there has to be reason. And you just, you, and this was at like the, your, the wake or, or the It service? actually was right after the services. We sat, we went back to our cousin's house and we had a conversation around the table and we just, you know, we said, this is what, we need to do this. And I actually have a daughter that is in recovery as well, and she's been in and out of recovery several times. So we do have a lot of this in common, and um, so we just decided that we need to get involved. I know um, for me, I was in fourth grade uh, when my uncle overdosed. He had overdosed, and basically they resuscitated him Mm -hmm. uh, multiple times, but the last time he overdosed, he was in the hospital for a while until he just passed. But, um, you know, leaving, leaving, living in California, coming back every now and then, I feel like the areas where I grew up, it just they just get worse and worse, and especially in Kensington. Um, I know a lot of heroin is a, is a huge problem right now in the city, and I know a lot of it gets like laced with fentanyl or, I guess, you know, it's not as pure as it used to be or whatever the case is, mm-hmm. but you got a lot more ODs. I just actually had to bury a friend of mine last year because he OD'd. Yeah. And um, what 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 are some of the things that you guys are seeing that uh, you're trying to tackle first, I guess? Well, I think with our primary goal was really to help those in early recovery. There's so many um, thing, obstacles that people in early recovery have to get through. Um, one of the things is they get through rehab, and then at that point, there's very little resources for them financially, um, you know, and then there's this cycle of recovery. So, you know, when, when they come out of recovery, we want to make sure that they get into a good supportive program, such as a recovery house. And what we do is we sort of take on, um, we call them family members, but basically uh, we take on the, the people and we give them scholarships at, up to 90 days depending on, um, you know, be, depending on what we have to supply. Um, but we give them up to 90 days. Within that period of time, we also help them with resume writing. Um, we've done haircuts for them. You know, we'll do clothing for interviews, um, you know, things of that nature. We, we try to get involved in almost every aspect, but that's ultimately where we start it. Since then, we have done many different things. We've fed recovery houses. Uh, we go in, into different recovery houses and we give them a meal and we give them family sense because we sit around and we have conversation with them. And it's not like we drop food off. We kind of sit and hang out with them, get to know them. We've built a lot of relationships that way. Um, I also do a lot of outreaches in Kensington. Um, I tried to work with the community. A couple of weeks ago, we did a very big community clean out, uh, clean up and, um, we had about 50 volunteers. So that actually was really pretty successful. Um, and it helps, it helps in the sense that give them community. You know, there's, it's, it's, it's a different world there. I don't know how else to explain it other than it's a different world. Their mentality is survival versus living. Um, So, you know, you kind of go down there, you build relationships. I've built relationships with people that are homeless living on the streets that I still get texts from just to check in and I check in on them. So you do build relationships and ultimately my goal is to get them off the streets and into recovery. But oftentimes you just need to do it at their level. So that's kind of where we've been, what we've been working on. A lot of it is um, difficulty with fundraising and, you know, so that's always our challenge. You know, we are completely nonprofit. We don't have any corporate funding. So everything is funded through through what we can do, how we support ourselves. We do little fundraisers here and there. We sell T-shirts. You know, we just do something to kind of keep us going. And we jokingly say we don't know how we do it, but we always manage to do it. You know, we just had a girl that we just took on. We didn't have any money in the bank. And all of a sudden, we just... We figured it out. We figured it out. Figured it yeah, out. and it's Definitely. just the kind of the way we are. And it literally is, there's, what, 10 of us? 
but yeah. There's about, about there's about ten of yeah. us, and you know we just figure it out. I yeah. like um, I like how you were saying it's it's a community. If there's yeah. one thing I preach on this podcast all the time, it's about community. Yeah. Um, what are some of the do, do you guys find getting fun funds uh a little harder than other nonprofits because of just the stigma of people being in, on uh for like a better term. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I see what you're saying. I mean, addiction. to be honest with you right now, we're sort of um, utilizing the recovery community a lot. So we do get somewhat funding. I mean, you know, as I said, there's times that there's nothing in the bank, but you know, our funding is minimal, but a lot of it comes from um, the recovery community. Those that have children in recovery, family members in recovery. Um, at some point we are going to, I mean, unfortunately with the pandemic, you know, there's a lot of corporate funding that just not available right now, or, you know, and we, ha- it's, we have a lot of learning to do. So at that point we will um, eventually get into corporate funding um, so we haven't really come up to any walls like that yet. Yeah, because we, we do have a lot of, um, between all of us that sit on the board, we all bring a different element to it, you know, and what Denise was just saying, um, the girl that we just got, we were able to help, you know, it was an awesome thing. We went, we got t-shirts made and, you know, like I said, and I didn't say my name's Bill Jericho and I'm also on the board. I do a lot of outreach also and um so we got these t-shirts made and what happened was a woman that i worked for because i work in in treatment and a woman i worked for out in california bought 50 of them right away you know and that right there was able for us to be able to take her on and and help her with her you know so it is it's it, it, it can be hard with the stigma of addiction you know i myself i'm in recovery you know when when spark started like Denise said, it was my it was my younger sister Maggie Jericho. Um, you know she she had called me back in um about February of 2018, or or no, I'm sorry, it was February 2019. And at that time, I I was early on in my recovery, working in treatment, and um you know and how I was introduced to everything because I myself I was homeless down in Kensington, Allegheny. I was out there for years in and out of jail. Um not a lot of people had faith that I would make it out. And, uh, I was fortunate to be a part of something, um, to where these people helped me get into treatment out in California. And right away while being out there, I started working in, in the treatment field, working at a, out there called them sober living houses. It was all men's house. And, and from being on what happened was I was on a, I was on a TV show, that actually came in and, you know, and from being on that TV show, uh, um, it opened up a lot of doors for myself to where I could start talking to people and, and networking with a lot of people. And when my sister called me and told me that she, you know, was using again, uh, I was able to call some people and, you know, and this is a thing because what we, what we know about treatment now is like, it's a business, you know, and with a business, it, it's the, the bottom line is always a dollar. You know, and with dealing with this epidemic, you know, for for us out here that aren't in the business, that don't know about the business, we look at it and we see the lives that are being lost. You know, and my sister called me and I was able to get her, you know, a, a scholarship into a detox center over in Jersey. And um, and from there, you know, a friend of mine was, I, we were able to help her get into a, a recovery house out in Levittown and you know, and this is the this is the bad side of business is that a lot of places aren't aren't ethically sound. They're not ethically good people. You know, and they'll throw people inside of a house and and just collect money, and that's right, all they right. care about. You know, and she was in one of those houses, unfortunately. And on May 9, thousand nineteen, at one thirty in the morning, they walked in her room and they found her dead. You know, and and um, you know, my mom didn't find out till about ten o'clock that morning. You know, and and it was a hard situation. It was hard, you know, and, and I flew right home from California and, you know, and like Denise said, like when we got together and we decided to do this is because we don't want families that have to go through what we went through, you know, and that's why we focus on people that are in early recovery and we still do our outreaches. Like I said, I was homeless down there. You know, I, I, I sometimes when I go down there, I see guys that I was out there with guys that I got in high with, I spent time in jail with. And I see them out there and, um, 
you know, and I wish I could help everyone, but the reality of it is, is that we learn that 